Hi, my name is Lona Muthania Uchido and I'm making it one of my life's mission to demystify the speech therapy field and to empower more parents on what they can start to do in order to optimize their child's communication outcomes. So whether you want your child to talk more or talk better, learn better and overall optimize their potential. So stay tuned and feel free to send in any topics on speech and language development you'd like for me to tackle. Welcome to today's My Opinion About series where I'll be tackling potty or toilet training and how to train the difficult to train child. So when should your child be potty trained or toilet trained by? I guess that is the question. And any parent for whom the toilet training process is feeling frustrating would definitely understand who a difficult to train child is. In my experience, these children are the ones who just don't seem to want to give up the diapers. And they usually might, in most cases, have a delay in language or might even be on the autism spectrum. So, by what age should your child be potty trained? I really don't think there are any hard or fast rules on what is the age by which, by when your child needs to be potty trained by. I mean, if your child has a, is typically developing, then I would say maybe by about two and a half or three years, but usually about two and a half or by two years, if your child is typically developing, you are starting to introduce the idea of going to the toilet and doing all your business in the toilet. And these children usually might be still not uh, dry throughout the night, but definitely during the day they could. And usually the first step is that a child would indicate when they want to go for number two. So normally that that's what would happen. And then slowly once they have mastered that, then you're introducing them to going and doing, you know, a pee in the toilet. But um, what I'm seeing a lot um, of complaints at the clinic is parents who have children who are probably three, who are probably four and still in their diapers. And these parents are desperate, like, what can we do? You know, like, I am usually, you know, quite emphatic. You know, if I see a four-year-old that is in the diaper, like, you need to potty train. And I ask them, so how are you going about it? And they say, oh, well, it's very difficult. And yeah, taken, and I agree. Children who have a delay usually are much more difficult to train. It's the reason, it's the same reason why it is much easier to train a two-year-old than it is to train, say, a one-year-old because they don't have the language. So you can't really uh, expect to be able to um, uh, talk to them, reason with them when they're not even understanding. So for the children that don't have language, yes, it is difficult. And maybe the first step is actually to get your child to develop uh, a level, you know, uh, a good level of language skills or at least understanding. For the child that actually understands but isn't necessarily verbalizing, then that child, and is still not potty trained, I usually say that child, it is possible to actually train that child. Why do I say this? You can give the instruction. This is a child that will probably not, uh, you know, like soil themselves while they're seated. They'll probably go to a corner and then that is when they'll do their business. Or you'll go and sit them on the toilet or on the potty, and then the whole time they're not doing anything, and as soon as they've gone, they then you've put on a diaper on them, then they do it. And I say, usually in such a situation, that is more of a behavioral issue. So it is a habit that you need to break. You know, how do you break that habit? Um, being creative. I say to parents, be creative and be consistent. So if you're potty training your child, Everybody needs to be on board. You cannot then one day decide we are putting a diaper on and then tomorrow we are saying no, to, today we are actually trying to potty train. It has to be consistent. So the number one mistake that I see parents making is, and I would ask them, so how are you trying to potty train? Why is it so frustrating? And they'd say to me, well, we have in a potty and she doesn't like to sit on the potty or she doesn't like to sit on the potty. I say, and your child is four years. You know, if your child is four years, really if your child is over 18 months, no need to have a potty. You know, they should go directly on the toilet. If it's, you know, modern toilet where they're sitting on, much easier. I have often suspected, you know, for some children who are refusing the potty altogether. Yes, it could be a behavior, it could be a habit, but it could also be it is uncomfortable. 
Can you imagine, you know, sitting your bum on a small potty? It is so uncomfortable. So I would say to those parents, you know, ditch the potty and just have your child sit on the actual toilet. And then, you know, and, and they panic. Oh, what if they fall in? They will not fall in. Like, they will not fall in. I remember with my second baby, we went to visit grandma and grandpa and we forgot our potty. I think then he was 15 months. Came back home, we didn't have a potty and I was faced with the dilemma, should I buy a potty? And I was like, I don't wanna buy a potty. I get very attached. So I was really attached to that potty and I was like, you know what, we will just introduce the toilet. He was 15 months and we'd put them on the toilet. And then I, all, at the beginning, all I, have to, I had to say to him was like, hold on tight to mama, hold on tight, don't fall in, don't put your hands under the toilet. So I just had to give, you know, the cue, which again is fantastic, it's language. And then after that, he one day he said, no touch mama, no touch mama. So he was quite confident to sit there alone and he never fell in. And the advantage of the toilet seat that has, what it has over, the advantage that it has over a potty is that you know, you're already, your bowel, your system is open. It's, it's good. It's just easy for you to actually do your business. As opposed to a potty, which might actually pinch your bum, it's really an awkward position. So a child doesn't even feel very comfortable doing it. So, yeah, so that's one thing you can start to do. Introduce an actual toilet. And then now be creative with it. As I said, consistency as well. So most children are really highly motivated with flushing the toilet. So don't let your child flush the toilet if they've not done the business. So start to model what you want them to do. So if they have older siblings or if they have younger siblings that are actually potty trained or toilet trained, get them to use the toilet. And once they use the toilet, you're giving them a high five, you're celebrating that, you're excited, and then they get to flush. Not your child that is refusing to, pot to, to go to use the toilet. No, 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 no. You don't get them to enjoy, you know, the results of really not putting in the work. So you're like, no, if you want to flush the toilet, you have to use the toilet. So with the child that you're using as a model, you know, you give a high five, you can use, give them a sticker, and that's very exciting. And then it's your child's turn. So you sit them there, and it might not happen right away, but I promise if you are consistent, it will, it will pay off. And if you have no other child, if you have no other child to use as a model yourself, so you go use the toilet, daddy is using the toilet, daddy is used, finished using the toilet, you're giving a high five, you're giving daddy a sticker, you know, and it's all looking exciting, daddy's flushing the toilet himself. If your child then, you know, wants to go because they're probably really wanting, they're feeling like they're missing out on all the excitement that is being, you know, dished around, they might just be motivated if they use the toilet. Go crazy, you know, high five, you know, sticker. And if that doesn't work, have a special toy that you buy or you have around the house that they only get to play with for a little amount of time after they've used the toilet. Let it be in a sort of visible, you know, but unreachable place, maybe in the toilet. And they know each time they use the bathroom, you know, they get to flush, then they get an opportunity to play with that toy. That way, it can be something that they're looking forward to. So be creative with that. And in between, if they do have an accident and they, they poo in the diaper, as you are changing the diaper, let it not be a pleasant, you know, like um, experience. You know, you need to say, oh, yucky diaper again. We don't do poo poo in the diaper, okay? We have to do poo poo in the toilet. You know, reinforce it all the time so the child is wanting the, rea the reaction you give after they use the toilet. That really pleasant high five, let's give you a sticker, or you know, getting excited. That is what they're looking forward to, as opposed to the other, you know, the sort of semi uh, reprimand that is happening. My two year old, who just two years and one month at the moment, we are in the process of toilet training him. And it's very exciting. And these are the things that we keep reinforcing all the time in the house. I mean, he does have his language you know uh, he understands and he does communicate and really there's no excuse for him not using the toilet so we are constantly reinforcing uh where do we do poo 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 we do poo poo in the toilet do we do poo poo in the bum bum in the diaper no no poo poo in the bum bum poo poo where poo poo in the toilet and we're constantly having to say this to him and when he does use the toilet successfully like he does his poo his business in the toilet oh you should see we are all getting excited we're like oh, you did poo poo in the toilet oh shall we go tell baba and we are marching to baba and baba is giving high fives everybody's giving high fives he's so excited so himself when he does 
when he does go to use the toilet and he's not using a potty people he's using the toilet the big toilet he's the one that is coming and and he's telling us or it, whoever has taken him is the one that is coming to share the news and we are celebrating and you know it's all exciting so well parents there you have it on potty training if you are in the process of potty training your child particularly a difficult to train child you know just be armed roll away all the rugs or, or um, um, carpets in the house be comfortable for having you know with having your child in you know undies or uh, boxes so that this process ends up happening if they have it if you have your child in a diaper it means it is much easier for you to almost like not be consistent with it so time them if you know the time that they normally go for to the to use the bathroom maybe after morning porridge or after a meal go sit them there and you know you're telling them about the sticker you're going to put on there and it doesn't you don't even need to buy stickers you know you just use a pen and draw a smiley face it's just really exciting but just make sure that after an hour or so you it's, you've taken it off there so that they are looking forward to the new one you know so they are not going to be excited for another one if you still Still, they still have it on their on their on their hand so um, I wish you all the best with it and um, have a look at our blog post on some more tips on how to go about it and all the best thank you mm -hmm.